Tony Ferguson has just come off an impressive win over Rafael Dos Anjos, and he looks very good. He's very technical, very versatile. He's got outstanding jiu-jitsu skills. He's got outstanding boxing skills. And although his wrestling is not as powerful as Habib's, um, if he gets Habib to the ground on the bottom, he is a real chance to win the fight. Um, so this is a real high-level lightweight fight, and it opens the door to a potential money fight with Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, of course, won the lightweight title against Eddie Alvarez in New York, the debut in New York. And um, he's campaigning for a match against Floyd Mayweather now. So that would be a boxing match as opposed to a mixed martial arts match. And um, so Tony Ferguson, you know, he, he believes he can beat Habib, even though he's undefeated. There's a story that goes that as a junior, Habib used to wrestle with bears. And uh, no wonder he's so uh, proficient at wrestling because he didn't just wrestle with, you know, human beings. He used to wrestle with, you know, bears. I'm, su- I'm sure it was all safe. Um, but, I mean, he grew up in Dagestan in Russia and he's a supremely talented fighter, someone who's been underrated throughout his career, but now he's really getting some limelight for his skills. I mean, a win-loss record of 24-0 and speaks volumes. I mean, you, you don't really have to look past that. And he's versed some real high-level fighters. Um, Rafael Dos Anjos stood out. He put in a more dominant form- performance against Rafael Dos Anjos than Tony Ferguson did. And Tony Ferguson uh, lost the first round against Rafael Dos Anjos, but he came back and uh, he looked very in control of the match throughout. And... Uh, you know, both of these fight, both of these fighters, Habib and Tony, they have a mindset of gold. I mean, they're real barbarians when it comes to fighting. You know, they they come to fight. Uh, they they're not here to play games. Um, even though you know they they like to banter back and forth. You know, get into each other's heads. Um, you know, both of them are strong mentally, and that's a big thing in the UFC. If you're strong mentally, then um, the physical aspect takes care of itself. I mean, a lot of these fighters are talented anyway. So Tony Ferguson, even though he's not undefeated, he's coming off an eight win streak or around that. And he looks like the only likely opponent who could beat Habib Nurmagomedov. I mean, Conor McGregor has already lost to Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz is, of course, a very good lightweight fighter. Competed... In welterweight, though, um, against Connor, but you know Tony Ferguson, he's a one fifty five pounder. He cuts a lot of weight. He's about you know nearly six foot, so he he cuts a lot of weight to get to one fifty five pounds in um, kilos. That's about uh, 70, 70 kilos. So that's quite a it's quite a you know a weight cut, so to speak. Have you been hearing the rumours? I mean, they've been going around for months now, but it could actually happen. Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather Jr., a boxing match. Now, I know this is a mixed martial arts show, but I think this is very relevant because Conor McGregor is primarily a mixed martial artist and he is campaigning for a boxing match against Floyd, which would be absolutely historic in a number of ways. Um, Floyd Mayweather is undefeated and Conor McGregor is a, even though he's a versatile mixed martial artist, he is mainly a boxer at heart, um, even though he's got all these different tools to win. And the sticking point here is not that they don't want to fight each other, it's the money. Um, So this rumored boxing fight could generate millions of dollars. It could even uh, surpass that of Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. I'd be surprised if it didn't um, because what you have here is a crossover from the Ultimate Fighting Championship to the um, to boxing. And who better than to verse than Floyd? A couple of things to point out, though. Um, Floyd Mayweather is 39 years old. 
Conor McGregor is in his late 20s. So Conor McGregor is really entering into the prime of his career, whereas Floyd is past the prime of his career. But because he's such a talented boxer, his, um, say, uh, depreciation from his peak hasn't been um, as fast as some other fighters. He looks after his body tremendously, no alcohol, um, and so he's really diligent in that sense. And, you know, what what you'd have here is two trash talkers of the highest order. Trash talkers is really an American term for saying it's really, you know, it's not a it's not a criticism. It's actually a compliment because when you think about it, you need to promote the fight. And these two promote the fight. There's no better promoters than uh, Connor and Floyd. They're fighters and promoters and entertainers. And a boxing match would be absolutely amazing because you'd get a match where Conor McGregor is known for his left hand. He can knock people out. Um, obviously, Floyd Mayweather is a lot more technical in boxing. He's had a lot more skill. He's a bronze medalist in the Olympics. But um, you never know. One hit and it can change the course of a match. The problem with Floyd is that he's he's the epitome of the sweet science. He knows how to hit and not get hit. And that's what boxing is for you. It's the sweet science. And Conor McGregor might find that a little difficult because in boxing, you're always taught to have your hands up as opposed to hands down. And because you're defending takedowns in mixed martial arts, obviously you're naturally going to have your hands down for some of the time. Whereas Floyd Mayweather um, comes from a long pedigree of um, fighters. You know, his family... uh, were boxers. Um, his dad, Floyd Mayweather Sr., was a good boxer. Um, and so he has, he's been training for boxing since he was a kid, since he, you know, could crawl. Whereas, you know, Connor started out as a way to, you know, as a way to self, for self defense. Whereas with Floyd, boxing is in his blood. So it won't be a mixed martial arts match if it were to happen, it'd be a boxing match. And the sticking point would be the money. Because if you have, say, a pizza, there are only certain slices of money each fighter can get or each promoter can get. And you and Floyd Mayweather wants $100 million straight up. And he doesn't want to negotiate any less. And Conor McGregor is saying, I should have $100 million. But obviously, you know, there's got to be a bit of give and take. $100 million for each fighter is probably asking for a bit too much. Um, because with mixed martial arts or boxing, they're both the same in that pay-per-view counts and it's about what you get on the back end. So how many, um, people are paying to watch you fight that works in mixed martial arts or boxing. WME IMG purchased the UFC for over 5 billion. So it's, it was rumored to be 4 billion, but that's in... American currency. We're talking Australian. We're talking at least one billion more, five billion. So the UFC is going through a major transition at the moment, and what is happening now is that there are a lack of stars in the UFC which can alleviate that debt. Conor McGregor, where is he? He's campaigning for not a mixed martial arts match, but he's campaigning for a boxing match. Ronda Rousey, uh, she came to Melbourne. And it was a complete sellout at Eddie Hatt Stadium. And she's coming off two losses. She may never fight again in the UFC. So she was one of the superstars that the UFC promoted. And now that has essentially, you know, backfired. I mean, that's just the nature of fighting. You can win or you can lose. And how about Brock Lesnar? He's serving a drug suspension. So he's off the cards. He's competing in the WWE now. He, of course, made a return to the UFC um, in 2016 against Mark Hunt. And um, he got caught um, for a drug. And uh, he's, not, he's not allowed to fight until this year. So in the middle to late of this year. So he won't be available f- for the UFC at the start of this year. So who, who are they going to find that's going to help alleviate this debt. I mean, the UFC have already been making cuts to the promotion as a way of trying to find ways to make more revenue. Um, Mike Goldberg, you know, um, 
a head staple of the commentary team with Joe Rogan on UFC pay-per-view events, he's gone. So um, the UFC made that decision. And uh, it's in this weird phase now where WME, IMG, they're obviously well credentialed in entertainment. But when you buy a business... Um, or a promotion rather for five billion, you need to make sacrifices to get some of that money back. Imagine mortgaging a house for, you know, two million, three million. You know, you have to find ways to get more revenue. I mean, the first rule of business is to um, spend more. No, don't spend more than what you buy. And um, this is the pinnacle of business and WME IMG are kind of, you know, they, they, they are the head um, entertainment base, you know, now. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They just acquired the UFC from Zufa and uh, now they're trying to find a star. You know, who is it going to be? Uh, John Jones, he's not coming back until, you know, middle of to late this year. Um so, you know, at the moment, you know, they're promoting Habib and Tony Ferguson. Um, they're thinking about, you know, Russia. They're thinking about getting Habib to Russia and potentially selling out the crowd there. Imagine Habib Namagomedov versus Conor McGregor in Russia. You know, th- th- that stadium could be 90,000 plus. But the, the bad thing here is that the pay-per-view wouldn't be as good because, you know, Las Vegas is the heart of pay-per-view and that's where a lot of the money comes in in russia it'd be a little bit difficult uh, i know when michael bisbing versus dan henderson for the middleweight title um yeah they had to they had to start you know basically near midnight because um or just after midnight so that the american audience could buy the pay-per-view could wake up could buy the pay-per-view and watch it so uh because the UFC is so universal, it doesn't really matter about language barriers. I mean, everyone knows fighting in some shape or form. And, you know, WME, IMG, they're trying to reach out to different aspects, different countries. Habib in Russia would be amazing. Habib looks like one of the next stars. Um, the women's division, Holly Holm, is competing for a new uh, featherweight belt. So that's the new belt introduced in the women's division. And so WME, IMG, they have to find ways to get more money in. And sometimes that means making those hard decisions, letting people go, even if they've been so loyal to the company. And you're listening to Above the Octagon on Sin 90.7.